Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Uh, my name is Nevis Sarmento. I'm a microbiologist from Timor Leste. I am the chair, current chair of the PCV subcommittee of NITAC Timor Leste, and also a researcher at the Menzies School of Health Research in Darwin, Australia. I would like to proceed with the outline of the day, where I will talk about the brief story about Timor Leste, our NITAC PCV recommendation, the carriage studies, and all the pneumocil introduction, including the lesson learned and the plan ahead. So we are just about uh, 700 kilometers from Darwin in Northern Territory, Australia, or we have, we share the land border with Indonesia. And we have been on, uh, under Portugal for 450 years, and then 24 years under Indonesia, three years under Japan, and independent in 2002. So same similarities that we have. We have 1.3 million population. We have 12, 13 municipalities. Uh, we rely a lot our budget on a petroleum fund and a little over 20 years ago we had uh, in 1999 we voted to separate ourselves from Indonesian occupation 78 percent of us we chose we cho opted the independence and the subsequent impact was disastrous nearly infrastructure was all burned and we have to build everything from the scratch. So this is the health system delivery in the, in the country. So in the year 2000, we only had 20 doctors because the previous doctors are, are all from Indonesia. They all gone back and we started with 20 doctors. And now we have more than 1000 doctors. We have 1,300 to 1 1.3 million population. Large, largely thanks to the Cuban government. We, we sent thousands at one time, just Fidel Castro sent the plane and sent Timorese to Cuba, and thousand at one time. And now we, have, we I think we have achieved that minimum standard of WHO, one, one per 1,000, I think. Oh, 10,000. Uh, we have, but at the same time, we have also have the same problems. We have malnutrition. Maternal and child mortality, TB, dengue, still, still many other infectious diseases. Uh, apart from that, we also have some major advancements. We eliminated malaria less than 10 years of independence. And measles rubella, we are on the brink of eliminations. And although we have higher number of TB, our MDR TB is less than 1%. So that's uh, some of the advancements. Oh, sorry. So our history of uh, immunization, uh, it started in 1978. We basically there was during the Portuguese and Indonesian transition, and we started in 1978, and now we have introduced all, mainly all the important vaccines that has been recommended, and we have just introduced Pneumocil in January this year, and we are on track to introduce the HPV towards the end of this year, or if we don't, if we can push hard, then if we cannot, then early next year. This is uh, the current immunization schedule. Uh, this for children in Timor. We'll update once the HPV vaccine uh, is introduced. Pneumonia is very big, but uh, as you see, we also have the high number of mortality, child, health morta child mortality, under children under five. Uh, we have about 40, 42 to 44 
children died uh, per, per, uh, per thousand live births. So that's still a lot in Southeast Asian region. So that's why we have a lot of cases and even and 20% of these cases are a lower respiratory tract infection, including pneumonia and uh, mal uh, bronchitis. Uh, this statistic is significant and for Timor, uh, we important for, to compare for other uh, regions, uh, countries in uh, ASEAN region, Seattle region, but it's also understand our disease burden as well. I mean, in this graph, it's only showed the, the graphs of the, the 11 countries in ASEAN. We are still the, the third highest of the lower respiratory tract infection comparing to Laos and Cambodia, but Laos and Cambodia introduced uh, the PCV earlier than us. So I think this is a little bit outdated already. We will have to update once the new uh, studies or the comparison of all the burden of pneumonia or lower respiratory tract infection in Southeast Asia region. But having said that, we also have the highest number of uh, malnutrition. We, for this, uh, the latest UNICEF estimation, 47% of our children under five are stunted. So that's a big number for us. And although we don't see much of a moderate and lower uh, the severe acute malnutrition, but we still have all these cases. And plus all the global hunger index, we still on the red side. So although we, people said we have a lot of oil, but it's still, it's, it's also a curse. <laughs> The data from the hospital, if you look at on the left, we have about 43%. So this is the data we, we see. About 43% admission, about 28% deaths in children under five in pediatric department. And also those who are admitted, it's about 62% has severe malnutrition and also about 60% have were stunted. So these are, these are the cases that we always see. So we recommended, with all this clinical evidence and all the cocktails of risk factors that we have, we have dust, we have a low ceiling of house, house, we have smoking, we have everything. The Ministry of Health, the expanded program of immunization, and we, we, we needed to act quickly. So the NITAC PCV subcommittee then led the recommendation including discussion to introduce PCV on evidence-based decision-making, largely thanks to uh, our support from Na uh, National Immunization uh, uh, Center for Immunization Research in Australia, and also our professor from uh, Cape Town who was in Timor during our helping us to do all this uh, decision-making process. So we opted for, we opted for uh, the dose of uh, the 3 plus 0, even though WHO is scheduled for the uh, 2 plus, uh, including 2 plus 1, recommending 2 plus 1, and also 3 plus 0. During the evidence-based decision-making, we review our national data and opted the, for the 3 plus 0 schedule. Changes might happen after the PCV vaccine impact study, maybe looking at the disease uh, carriage endpoint, immunology, or invasive pneumococcal disease later on. So we argue that 3 plus 0 primary series will provide better protection. So children are vulnerable in the first year of their life with all other infection diseases, including all the risk factors you mentioned, we opted to introduce the uh, 3 plus 0. And, and based on this uh, cover, coverage uh, cluster survey, we also uh, think that believe that uh, vaccines a recommendation of 6 10 and 14 weeks the coverage it's it's a, it's, it's a better for uh, highest vaccine coverage so our target population we is children who were born uh, less uh, on 6 10 and 14 weeks but then also we recommended catch up campaign at the same time so we those children who are between 1 to under uh, one to uh, 59 uh, 
months or one to uh, five years, we all, we all receive a single dose. We were uh, luxur have a luxury to introduce the pre-PCV, pre-Nemocil carriage study. So we did some of the study, doing two studies of the uh, uh, hospitalized carriage and also the community carriage. So it was, it was a luxury for us to prepare for us. So the, study, the first study in hospitalized children, we, those who are uh, admitted with malnutrition and pneumonia. So it's not ideal in other countries where we usually do the uh, community carriage, but we, we try it with the hospitalized carriage. We since found out that the impact of hospitalized carriage children survey. We, we found out that the, the carriage, we enrolled 603 children and getting a test of about 580 nasopharyngeal swabs. We, we found out only 21% of carriage, largely because antibiotic use before we collecting the swabs they've already been administered uh, antibiotics, so I think that's why. But the, we found, also found that 50% of the serotypes that we are, uh, is covered under Nemocil is also, has been detected in the, on, in the children. Early, the, just because of the uh, lower carriage rate that holds 21%, we arm with the hospitalized carriage data, lower respiratory tract infection disease burden, we were able to recommend introduce Nemocil in the country. We are currently conducting Nemocil carriage survey in the children in community to find out the carriage rate, distribution, and serotypes. This is due to the first study in the hospital. They only found 21% carriage and due to antibiotic use. So at the moment, we are doing the serotyping testing the same thing, we also detecting 50% of those uh, serotypes are detected in, uh, within the community, which is covered under the Nemocil. So it's similarity, there is a similarities between the uh, hospitalized carriage and also the uh, community carriage. So all the decisions on the Nemocil introduction all started in 2018. We started with participatory active discussions this diagram describes all the steps prior to PCV launch in Timor-Leste. It all, it all started in 2018 until 2022 where participatory active discussion occurred. Like many other countries, we work collaboratively with international partners to formulate our recommendation, including procurement of vaccines. With the help of partners, we sent our proposal to Gavi in 2019. It was approved, however, the COVID-19 Halted. So it took us five years since 2018 to introduce the vaccine in early 2023. Which we chose we chose to use Nemocil as largely because of the uh, I mean we were armed with the serological uh, the studies the pneumococcal studies uh, carriage study but also. Also of the, the price, but we know the disease burden and we know that we think what's best for our country. So I think we are, we are the first PC, uh, Pneumocil naive country. We introduce it. So this is the, the current uh, conditions in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN countries. We are the last one to introduce but many other countries Total seven countries uh, uh, have introduced, while the other four, uh, other are stopping for review or making uh, is as an uh, optional, or like Brunei, they haven't introduced, but uh, Vietnam soon is going to introduce. Launching of the national uh, campaign, we integrated it as a national campaign. So we you, not just introducing Nemocil, but because of the, the, we think that we spent the money, might as well use it as a national special campaign. And then we, to catch up all those, those who might have lagged behind. 
So our initi initiative, the Minister of Health on the top left corner, the, our minister itself came, uh, went for the uh, launching. National, this is a, these are the pictures of the national campaign. We did the, uh, we continued training of vaccinators also, we, it was happening while also running the cam uh, campaign. House to house sweeping also occurred uh, for routine immunization as well. Uh, in, that's including catch up as well. So we sent our vaccinators for house to house sweeping, including going for the, uh, the uh, how do you say, the farm. We, we have more than the national campaign of immunization, including intensive introduction of a PCV, and Nenimosil lasted from February, uh, January to February 2028, and then automatically transformed uh, in the, into the national uh, routine immunization. Our coverage as early estimations is more than 95%. However, as uh, countries where we are struggling with data as well, so we are still working out on those denominators. Denominators are, but nevertheless, we, are, we have high confidence that it is more than 95%. But the uh, latest cal calculation will come later on. What we have learned from the this uh, for from from our arts is that we know our disease burden our we have high burden of lower respiratory tract infection data is important research is important but li saving life comes first so give the children the chance to survive uh, as we already know we are i haven't mentioned but 50 50 percent of timorese are under 18. So 20% are under five. So our government has the right, and then they also, because of the strong political will and also strong personal will, we have a lot of doctors and we have a lot of nurses that can be deployed right down to the uh, health post level. And la finally, we also open to collaborate with the international partners working to support our, and um, driven by Timorese, but uh, getting the support from the international partners. Our next plan would be the expanded program of immunization, the review which will happen uh, of, uh, in October this year, and post-transition, uh, we already graduated from uh, Gavi, and we have spoken about it, and there will be a potential uh, support for us. So post-transitional plan proposal 2023-2025, we'll have to, we'll sit together and do it quickly. And potentially post-vaccine, post-PCV vaccine impact study. So maybe one year post-introduction carriage, we are doing the draft proposal. RCT of Nemocil, we are the first country to introduce, might as well use the chance to study it. So at the moment, it's led by one of the alumni of John Hopkins. Dr. Nick Van Court, so he's, he's gonna do it in the malnutrition cohort. And we will hoping to review the scheduling. As we all know, six, 10, and 14 weeks, we have to inject the children three times. We are thinking about, not yet, but we are thinking about doing one, one plus one or versus three plus O just to give, to find out whether there is, there is similarity in immunological response. And we also still continue rolling out Nemocil as routine immunization in health centers, including house-to-house -house sweeping. I think I have to acknowledge all, the, I have to initially have to acknowledge the, the government of Chad and all the Minister of Health of the four countries that invited us here, but also I have to special mention the Fundacion Merio, all just actions, everybody that is mentioned here to supporting me and coming here and to talk about the uh, Nemocil introduction in Timor. Uh, merci beaucoup.